we go. Well, that just scared the crap out of me. Whoa. Oof, I just blinded the crudiddle out of myself. Okay, yes, it's dark. We're about to go somewhere with light. And I'm kind of using the camera to get all the webs. But I have mentioned how my garage has me feeling like a Disney princess. We're about to find out why. It is a hot mess in here. Ah, get some light on that. Hey, Mama. Have you given up on your other eggs? Okay, we're gonna walk through this dirtiness so I can get the other lights on. Because right now I am more worried about Miss Broody than I am Elvis and them. They can stay sleeping for a hot minute, they're fine. Okay, save my flashlight. First things first, oh. <laughs> Uh, Midge and Pidge are ready to eat. Hold on a second, let me flip you around. We are building Midge and Pidge their own birdhouse. That will be outside. Hey, Midge. I know you're waiting on food, aren't you? I'm coming. They love the bird seed, obviously. Not the bird seed, the sunflower seed. Yep, there you go, Midge. She gets really close. And I don't know who in here is cooing, but that would be Pidge. One day, one day you'll fly on me and land on me. Oh. Pidge is up there. Waiting for me to get out of the way. And then... Our little chipmunk friend will also come in and eat what the birds aren't eating and may actually eat with the birds. So Chip is our chipmunk friend. Um, there are lizards and frogs and snakes also in our garage. <laughs> and you know what? It's fine. Everything's fine. I kind of like it. And I will get into their story here in a minute. But first, we have to check on Miss Broody. She's been trying to have babies for two years. She finally had some babies. And I had to remove her from the coop because Big Bertha was attacking her eggs and not letting her babies hatch. And she was, Big Bertha was killing the babies. So, we're going to check on her and her babies. Make sure she's okay because she's out here by herself. And she's probably one of our nicest hens. Like, she's super lovable. So let me get you flipped around. I have got, it's too early to work this camera. Like, is it too early to work this camera? And yes, there's a cage on top, but that's because we do leave the garage a little bit open for the birds and the other animals. To get in and out as necessary, and I wanted to make sure her babies were safe. Hi, Miss Thang. Whew, we gotta get that cleaned out. That's a little stanky. Oh, hey, little one. Hi, sweetheart. Do I have gloves out here? I do. And I have paper towels. Good. Let's hope there's no spiders in the gloves. Put my hands in these gloves. Well, technically, I only need one glove. And something I can use as a trash bag. Oh, I think the little, the other little baby's popping its head out. It is. 
Does that mean you've given up on the other eggs you're not covering? Move the food. I gotta clean up your poopies. Move the water. She will not leave her babies. So I'm just gonna come in here and clean up. Oof, the stinky ickiness. And that's already better. Let's check the other eggs. Oh, I know I accidentally broke him. I'm sorry. Yeah, that wasn't even going to be a chicken. So we're fine there. Oops. My bad. I did not mean to do that. Oh, you're cute. Look at him. Oh. I don't know if they're boys or girls yet. But she also knows I won't hurt them. Okay, you you got to jump off my hand there, little man. There you go. I need you to move, honey, so that I can clean up underneath of you. Oh, I guess she's not done with the eggs. She's like, honey, these are my eggs. You are not moving them. Hey! Why are you biting at him? baby. You didn't do nothing. Oh, you telling him to hide? Okay. Let's get you lifted up so that I can see if there's any poopies. I know you're not happy about it, honey. I'm trying to do this without hurting the babies. No poopies. We're good. Oh, wait, there's... Oh, that's a green pepper. All right, that's fine. Well, are you going to cover the eggs? I'm just looking to see if any of them have cracked. I know. I know you're not fucking happy with me. Okay. So we are not a morning girl then, huh? All right. That is our array of oh, things. I gotta get that thrown in the trash so it doesn't attract predators. And get her lid back on so she's not so moody. I have learned chickens get a little moody. Once they have babies. You know, your food's right here if you get up off the egg. <laughs> we got Midge and Pidge walking around getting curious. Mama's protected again. 
And shit probably won't come out until I leave the garage. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's almost story time. Grab a cup of coffee. I don't know if this is going to be a long story or a short one. But we are going to talk about how Midge, Pidge, all the animals, <laughs> everything came to be. So when I lived in the city, I always had cats or dogs or both. It was the thing. And they're, they were all adopted. <laughs> they were all rescues. I don't know who's mewing right now. I think that may, oh, that's Luna chasing something. But I don't know what. They see all the things I don't. <laughs> <sighs> but when we moved to the country and we got our property and we got our house, I was in a really, really bad place. And I should have been in a really good place. We've got a new home. We got property. Just had just gotten married and everything was really good except there was a portion of my life that I was going through that was just a lot of crap went down at one time and it was just a lot so i made a pledge that this property would be safe for anybody or anything that needed help and i mean anything animal spiritual physical anything and that promise got tested and I am living up on that promise. So Pidge was the first one. <laughs> no, actually Pidge wasn't the first one. Pepper, our kitten or cat, she's now the second youngest. Pepper was the first one because Finrear, our husky, we actually sought out and got because we both really, really wanted a husky. But Pepper came to be by, um, they were putting in a new septic tank and we have a cat named Buddy who my husband rescued before we met and super loud cat meows all the time just a super loud cat and I thought he was meowing and I was like oh dude come on I have meetings you need to be quiet along with the excavation crew in the back putting in the septic tank it was just crazy loud so I see Buddy I hear the meowing and it's not Buddy so I go outside and I can still hear it over the excavation equipment. I don't know if anybody else had a septic system put in. It's loud. And I'm searching around because I know it's a cat. I can hear it. I know what a cat sounds like. And under our porch is this tiny, tiny little kitten just mewing her head off. Scared to death, completely alone. So I give her some tuna. Me, I stop the excavation crew. We're all trying to get this kitten out from underneath my porch so I can get it in the house and get it safe. It's not happening. They go back to work. I leave for some tuna and some water. And um, this is literally not even 24 hours after we brought home Fenrir, our husky, which took us up to three dogs. We already had five cats. So at about midnight, my husband and I are outside on our deck trying to catch this freaking kitten because it's not going to survive at all it will not survive on its own out there it is too tiny and it should not have been separated from its family at this point point. and it wasn't a dump we'll get to that this was not a dump cat so we finally get it inside we get it in a box she's scared to death and i have an appointment up in indianapolis that next day. And I'm like, I'm not leaving her home by herself. My mom hadn't quite moved down here yet, but I wasn't leaving this kitten home alone because she wasn't looking that great. And I knew my vet up north. So I just took her with me. And before I went to my appointment, I stopped at the vet and said hi to everybody because I have a lot of, we have a lot of animals. And I was like, okay, so I, we found this kitten underneath our deck. What can I do? She seemed really young. And they're like, yeah, she's like two and a half weeks old. So this kitten made it by itself through excavation equipment and the wilderness to underneath my porch for safety. Unbeknownst to this cat, she would become a princess and she is now our princess. 
and they're like she's two and a half weeks old they gave me some kitten food and some things to make sure she got healthy and dude this kid would get kitten would poop and it stung so bad and it was in my car it was so gross so I go to my appointment and then I go to my mom's house with this kitten in tow I'm at my appointment I take the kitten in with me in a box they give me a clean box at my appointment <laughs> to put the kitten in and the kitten stays with the receptionist <laughs> while I go back and have my appointment because I just brought everybody along for the freaking kitten ride. This is Luna. She was another rescue. Um, and so take her to my mom's. She's all over the place. And initially my mom was going to take her after she moved. But then my mom decided not to. And there was a picture my daughter had drawn. Drew? Drew? Yeah. My daughter drew like a year ago of a cat with wings and I'm going upstairs and I'm talking to my daughter and I look up at her wall and there's this picture and I'm like that looks familiar she just got cat hair on my coffee and the picture my daughter drew I will try to put it up on screen looks like pepper with wings so I'm like okay yep this is your cat this is the universe saying here's a cat you have earned a cat because the universe gives you cats. Because there's a specific type of person who can handle these things. <laughs> because they only want love when they want love. So that was the first rescue to the property. Um, the next was Pidge. So the cats and dogs were going insane at the front door and around the front windows. And I'm like, I don't see anybody. There's nothing there at all. So I eventually just walk out to the front porch and there's a pigeon, which is actually a dove. So they're the same thing. Um, Pidge, I thought was a male, I think is a female now, um, was just walking around doing nothing. And I'm like, shoo, shoo. And I was trying to scare it away because I didn't want the dogs, the cats going after it. Even though it was outside, they can, I have a pretty big dog. They can bust through windows if they want to. They have yet to do it, but they possibly could. And realized Pidge could not fly. And then Pidge started meandering toward the backyard where the dogs do have access. And that is their area. And I did not want this bird getting eaten by the dogs. I did not want to clean up a bird carcass. So I kind of shoot it into the garage as just a safe place to be. Little did I know what would happen. So Pidge had yet to leave. And probably will never leave. <laughs> then I was having already a bad day at work. And I was sitting by the front of the house working on my laptop. And I was watching two doves along the side of the road. And I'm like, man, they need to be careful. I was really wanting to go and shoot them away. But I had meetings and I couldn't get up. And then I turned and I look and I saw one of the doves get hit by a car. I mean, you, I swear this person intentionally hit that dub. To this day, I swear they did. And it broke my heart. And you could see the other dove mourning because doves and pigeons mate for life, much like penguins. So, like, I'm talking to one of my best friends at work and I'm just like almost, I'm basically in tears because I just saw this dove get freaking murdered. And its partner is just out there pacing around it, refusing to move. A few days later, this dove is in my garage. <laughs> and I name her Moonstone. Pidge had decided to befriend the dove, and they became mates. Hence where Midge came from. However, Moonstone has not been around in about a month, so I'm assuming she left and something happened to her. There's nothing I can do about that. It is sad, yes, but it it's nature. And once they leave the property, I can't do much to keep them safe. However, Pidge and Midge are still here. And Midge is getting really, really comfortable with me. So I'm hoping one day she'll land on me. I think Pidge was, is too wild. She's always been out and about and everything. But we are building them their own house. <laughs> to get them out of our garage because I am tired of cleaning up pigeon poop because it's freaking gross. Um, there's also a chipmunk. 
that we call Chippy because I'm very lazy with names. And as of yesterday, Chippy let me pull my car into the garage and he didn't move. He was like, yeah, yo, what's up? So the chipmunk is best friends with this giant rat snake <clears throat> that lives under our porch. Hence, one of the reasons we had to get the kitten out from underneath the freaking porch because we have a giant rat snake. Luckily, it was a cooler season, so it was probably sleeping. When I say a giant rat snake, this thing is like eight to 10 feet long. It's huge. And we leave it be because it eats rats and mice and keeps the things out of the house. But the chipmunk lives underneath the porch with the rat snake. So we're assuming that their story is that the chipmunk lures food to the rat snake. and Therefore, the rat snake leaves the chipmunk alone. So now that I'm feeding Pidge and Midge in a garage, <laughs> the chipmunk eats the leftovers. So it's always in the same spot. There's a bowl of water. Everybody's fed and happy and nobody ever leaves. <laughs> and now I've moved Miss Broody into the garage because Big Bertha attacked her and her eggs yesterday when I went out to check on them. There was like some brouhaha happening in the hen house. And when I went out there, I had noticed that Big Bertha was just like pacing around and being all mean. She didn't mean chicken. She like bit bit me. And um, I'd never been actually bitten by one of the chickens. And so I'd just been paying attention and I knew that another egg was about to hatch for Miss Broody. And Big Bertha got up into Broody's bin and started attacking her and attacking her eggs. And I'm like, oh, hell no. So I boot her out. I grab up um, Miss Broody and her eggs and her little crate that I had put her in to keep her safe and everything like that to give her a bit more room. And I take her into the garage and that's where she is now and that's what we saw at the very beginning of this. So when she got into the garage, an egg had just hatched um, or was about to hatch. And that's why Big Bertha went batshit crazy on her. So now I'm gonna give her a week with the eggs she has left and if nothing else hatches, I'm going to remove those eggs and she can start being a mama and end her broodiness. Her name is Miss Broody because she goes broody a lot. And these were her first babies and there was no way I was letting Big Bertha bully her and not let her have her babies. Because she has been wanting babies for a very long time. So, that is the story of all of the animals so far. And there will probably be more. And just for the knowledge, I don't know if anybody wants to know, but Pepper's family, I did find. So what had happened was um, the spring after we had found Pepper in the fall underneath the porch, I went out to the big garden to start prepping it and I found her siblings. The assumption is, is that a coyote got into where the mama had all the kittens and grabbed the kittens. Probably took out the mama because I have not seen any cat around here that looks like Pepper in the least bit. Um, and so I buried her kittens, her siblings. And the assumption is, is that somehow she got dropped by the coyote and made it to safety underneath the porch and because we have so many dogs, the coyotes just really don't come onto this part of the property near the house because it all smells like our dogs everywhere. They mark everything. So that's probably what kept her safe from the coyote coming back after her. Um, yeah, and that's their story. And I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot more of those stories because I wanted this property to be a safe place for everybody and everything. My husband's not too happy about the everything. But that's the story. That's how all the animals came to be. If you like these types of videos, please go ahead and hit the like button. Um, 
if you have any similar stories about how you got your animals, like Luna was found in a uh, drainage pipe. The storm was dying when we found her, when I adopted her. Kitsy, my pit bull, a rescue. Um, Lycan um, was technically a rescue, even though I bought him. He was being very, very, very mistreated. He was a stolen dog. Like, he was bred. You, you can tell this dog was bred, and he has good breeding. And I had him checked for a microchip. There was no microchip, nothing, so I kept him. Um, who else do we have that was a rescue? All of them were rescues, basically. Maka. Maka I found in a ditch at the grocery, uh, not the grocery store, at um, the gas station and grabbed her. I heard her meowing while in my car headed toward the highway. Um, Buddy, my husband, rescued. Lilith was, had been dumped at a pet smart like five minutes before my daughter and I got there and we had noticed that something was different about her. Um, she has some mental issues. She's not quite all there. <laughs> um, she is the cleanest cat you will ever see in your life. She cleans herself and everybody else and she has adopted Pepper and they are bonded. So no matter what, my daughter's going to have to take Lilith with her because Lilith and Pepper cannot be separated. Okay, so that's Luna, Storm, Lilith, Pepper, Maka, and Buddy. <laughs> then uh, we went and got Fenrir, which was a crazy story in and of itself because we thought we were riding up to a serial killer's house. We thought we were going to die. But I got to bed at Clydesdale. So there was a bonus on that. If um, you have any stories of your own about how your animals came to be, please leave that down in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. I love animals and probably one of the reasons my husband will not let me get a goat. He thinks the goats will end up in the house. They wouldn't because they would poop everywhere and I don't want to clean that up. But I still want goats. I do. I need some goats to wander onto my property because if they wander onto the property and I rescue them, that's a whole different story. I'm just not allowed to physically go out and buy goats. So we gotta figure out this way to get them onto my property. <laughs> so I can save them <laughs> and give them a home. Thank you all for sticking around. I really do appreciate it. I will see you in the next video, which I am not sure what that's gonna be yet. So bye and have a blessed and magical day y'all.